So here we've got the much loved 79 series cruiser. Now this truck's a full build, it's brand new. The guys at Croydon Toyota in Victoria have delivered the truck to us. The customer wants to insulate it against sound as much as he can, which is common with dual cabs, big tyres, it's been fitted with 35s. Diesel engine, it all adds to noise. So we're gonna do our thing, roof, floor, doors, rear wall, firewall. We're gonna install one of our four-wheel drive dual cab packs into this. Now, whether it be a, a Ranger, a Colorado, a Hilux, interior space of these trucks is all the same. So you can apply this kit to your vehicle. Now, all of these trucks are pretty lean on the insulation department. So what we're gonna do, pull the carpet, pull the seats, pull the headliner, and install a range of materials. So let's get started. So we can break the truck down into three areas, being the floor and rear wall is one treatment, the doors is the second, and the roof is the other. The four-wheel drive pack we're gonna put in this is the premium one where we're gonna treat all of them. So the question is, where do you start? Easiest way, strip the whole interior. We'll start, we'll take the seats out, we'll take the carpet out. Preference to taking those out is because we're gonna get in and do the headliner, rather than us standing on this and you know risking damaging, dirtying, all that. Get it all out first, then we'll drop the headliner. We'll do the treatment to the headliner first because we're gonna be standing in there on everything. Get the headliner back in, then carry on with the floor and reassemble the interior. The doors we can do last. If you run out of time, you're doing all that in one day and you've run out of time, doors you can do easy because you can isolate that as, as one area as the car. You can do that one afternoon or if you've got a spare time here or there, easy to work down. But have a look at this roof. This is the best example of a drum skin here. An analogy we use with a lot of people is, imagine this is a swimming pool and if we chuck a ball in it, the ripple effect will cover the whole water sheet surface, which is when I'm doing this, you can see the whole roof moving. So you can imagine driving down a dirt road and the th truck starts to joust and move. This skin really starts to vibrate. So our dampening sheets, we're gonna put on here. We'll do a test. Now you can hear that, I can see the whole thing move. Once we dampen it, that panel effectively has taken out that sound energy and put it into the rubber sheet so it doesn't have an instrument value to it. So let's get started. So we've got one box here, 1.8 square meters, 12 tiles at 300 by 500. We've got our application roller, which it's important that we apply pressure to it to get the adhesive to contact and bite in. We've got some prep wash, prep sole, which is a spray gray one, some clean rags. So it's important, particularly the roof, that we're working against gravity, not so important on your floor, but on any vertical or inverted surface to make sure the product sticks there. You want to avoid touching it because the wax the waxes and oils that naturally come out of your skin are gonna affect the adhesive. So this is an area you need to be pedantic. So we're gonna wipe this down. We'll spray some Prepsol up here and where we're gonna start. So you got a wipe on and a wipe off rag. So sometimes roofs will be treated with like a wax repellent, depending who's had their hands on the car. But you wanna make sure that it doesn't feel waxy, that it does feel smooth. Sometimes people have painted all sorts of bitumen texture coating. If it's not a dead smooth metal surface, then I really would suggest testing the product there to see how well it sticks before you go and do the whole thing. Now we've measured up. We've got one box, which gives you 12 tiles at 300 by 500. So we've calculated that this is the center line of the roof. If we place one there and then place one two here that gives us one two three four five a six one i'll use to fill in these last bits and that'll give us another six to use on the rear part of the roof so we're going to put our first sheet on and peel away the backing even if you just peel half of it away just to start like that then you can still handle the product so i'm going to aim this one up on the center line down the front here And I'm just gonna chase the middle down. Now we'll use our roller. You don't have to go too extreme that you're gonna actually change the shape of your roof, but just make sure you compress it enough that it's contacted on. In these areas where this roof has a swage, 
use this area of the roller and just push it down into the surface. And then you can roll the rest of it. If you do have an air bubble, you can see, feels like I've got one there. If you just get your utility knife that come with your install kit, just pierce that and then roll the air out. Just get your knife, don't score into the sheet metal, just lightly put a relief cut there and then you'll be able to massage any air that you're concerned about. So you wanna make sure with these ribs that you don't stick this bit down and then try and force it up. So roll it in, almost as if you're upholstering it. Make sure you get it right into that valley before you contact down. So we've got our aluminium foil tape here, which we're gonna go over all the joints where each pad touches each other. Reason we're gonna do that is because we've got our six mil foam that we're then gonna upholster the surface with. That means we've got a consistent aluminium face. It also means that we're double checking every joint where it's stuck down, pushing contact on it. So it's stuck there forever. So obviously a pretty rough test. Real world scenario is you tap on this roof now and it's solid. It doesn't have the whole pebble in the pond effect. So even with that rough test, using the same, I guess, testing mode that any of you guys can get just online, we still see a drop in it. And what it's gonna stop and what it's gonna reduce, when it's raining, when you're driving down dirt roads and when the car's moving, you've got a solid roof skin now. It's not pinging like an instrument. So I've just, I haven't taken the sticky back off this yet. I've just tucked it in and datumed it to the driver's side. On this left hand side, it pulls up around 100 mil short. But what's gonna happen at the back here is, we're gonna cut a bit off. So we're gonna butt up to this roof beam here, the header beam. Now what I might do, is peel away some of the backing and tack it here and then slowly work back. Cut this off as we get closer because that'll be stuck down. So you'll want to get your application roller here and compress the foam enough that you're pushing the adhesive down so it actually gets in, sticks and bites. Another good trick is get your application roller and run a file on the edge so it's not razor sharp. Stick it on a linisher if you've got one. You can use the back end of the roller, push it in the swages. Now, I've still got it oversized at the back here. And I've left it long here to tuck in. So you can get something like one of these guys and just feed it up in there. So we're gonna butt it up to this header beam because we've got to allow for the roof to bolt straight back on here so we don't want to build any more thickness into it. So an easy way to do it, I've left the backing on in that last four inches. I'm just 
push it up, mark a few lines on it. And now we pretty much just join the dots. So we'll simply cut along here. Now, if you've got a sharp set of scissors, you'll be able to just slide them across this product, which will give you a nice line. You can see I've gone a little bit long. So what I'll do is come in, we'll just take an extra five mil off it. So we've got our excess bit here that we're going to put up in this patch. So I'm just going to poke it in there and work out, okay, the width's about there. We'll simply put a cut in that. And then we'll just double check that down this end. Uh, it's not bad, so we could run that all the way straight. So what I'm going to do here is take it over the bench and get a steel rule and cut a nice straight line. What I'm doing here is pushing the foam in to butt it up to itself so there's the gaps minimum. So I'm only concentrating on sticking this patch down. The rest should fall into position. So we've got one more sheet here, which will be more than enough to do the back. So we'll wipe that down again. Might start here. So what you can do when you get to a corner down here is just cut a radius on this. That'll allow you to feed it in to that corner. That's the roof done. So now we can put the headliner back in. So if you've got an older truck that doesn't have a headlining, what you can get is our six mil insulator which doesn't have a logo on it that way you can peel and stick it directly to the roof and you'll get away with it as a finished coating without having to apply another lining so before i put this b pillar trim on we had some off cuts of dead in the left that we've tapped around and found this patch here figured we might as well put a patch on there it's near your ear if you've got it use it okay. Okay. so now we're going to deaden the rear wall as you can hear, it's pretty hollow. So we've got a couple of sheets here. What I'm gonna do is form the sheets to the shape before we peel the back off to get an idea of where they're gonna fit. Now there's a bracket down here where the uh, jack is. So we'll just work around that. This looks like a good spot to start. So we'll get our first sheet on there. And we'll just clean this down with our wax and grease remover.
So we've got our rear wall covered with the stage one deadener. There's no need to go over this top hat section because it's spot welded and reinforced, it's closed. It's not gonna rattle. These lower parts are though. So we've got them. Any other offcuts that you got, you can put up in these areas here. You can see on this side, if you tap on it, it sounds a bit hollow. All this is gonna get covered by the C-pillar trim. So even if you've got a small square, just tap around anywhere that seems light. Just put a small patch on there. We're now gonna cover this with the six mil foam. So we're gonna cover through here. We'll leave this exposed. And then we're gonna go down here, all the way to the floor. So now to start with the stage one sound deadener on the floor pan. We've allowed for 3.6 square meters, which is two boxes in this truck. I'm expecting the first box to get us to here. The rear one will get us to the rear wall. So there is a functional coating already put in here on the production line. In these later model trucks, they've got a, a paste, it's probably a bitumen based thing that's extruded by a robot in key areas. You can see it's pretty heavy in the foot wells there. Although if you still tap on it, there's still a bit of resonance there. It's your choice whether you want to go over that or not. If you got weight issues where you're pushing the GVM of a vehicle, if there's something there, you'd almost leave it. In the older trucks, they might have a hot melt bitumen. If you can get your hands under and it feels flaky, in that case, I'd take it off. If it's pretty solid, I'd probably just leave it because you're just gonna expense a whole bunch of energy trying to get it and you're not really gonna achieve much. A couple of other things to note too. You can see these grommets throughout the floor pan. This truck's gotta go and have a lot more work done to it, a lot more accessories fitted. So we don't wanna go over these because they might wanna run wiring through these at a later stage. So we're just gonna go around them. Also, the seat bolts, which is a hard point where that needs to meet metal on metal, we're gonna steer clear of those. And really, when you look at these, it's got a plate welded under the bottom. It's not gonna resonate through there. It's these single areas, single skin areas that you wanna try and attack. So if you just tap around, like I can tap there and I know the gearbox is there and it sounds pretty tinny. So first thing to do is get your wax and grease remover and a clean rag. We'll start in this area and we'll start applying. Now we're up to installing our mass loaded vinyl. This is gonna form our premium underlay in this dual cab pack. Now the sheets come 1.5 meters by one meter. In the front, what I've done is cut those sheets in half. So they're cut at about 750 down the center line. What I'm gonna to start to do with this sheet, I've tucked it in there, is work out where to cut it, where to relief cut it. I've already done this side on the driver's side. What you're gonna end up with is a sheet that's cut around all the mounts, brackets, what have we, that's removable on the lower side of it. It's got a six mil closed cell foam, so that's our decoupling layer. That's gonna help, it's waterproof. It's also gonna help reduce any heat transfer coming through, but its main goal is to separate the contact of this sound blocking vinyl. So here's the factory underlay in the Toyota. So this is our cotton jute, which we wanna take off because it's something that's not gonna fit anymore with the added thickness we're putting, but also something that's gonna hold water. So I've got a sample of what our mass loaded vinyl is here. And if we measure the two up, you can see thickness wise, they're gonna package up to be around the same. So we can't just stack that on top because we're gonna have too much bulk in there. So we'll go ahead and we can peel all this material off now. Mass noise liner light here, which I've cut the sheet in half 
So we ended up with something that's around 730 odd mil wide by a meter long. Now I've tucked it up like a floor mat. You can see up here on the firewall, there's the factory firewall blanket, which is also a mass load of vinyl product. We're just gonna tuck over it like a floor mat. Keep a bit of clearance here, because there's usually on this carpet, there's a C-section plastic that sits over this loom. So we want a little bit of clearance there. So we're running about 25 mil. And now, We'll just sort of massage this in, and we're gonna to have to put some relief cuts in it. So I can already see down here on the firewall, it wants to dart. So if we sort of figure out how that's gonna to wanna to sit, it wants to be cut through there somewhere. So a little bit of chalk here. We could just draw on a line down here. Now we'll just cut, pull him out. Cut a relief cut in there. Stop about there, feed it back in. Now that's gonna allow us to work this material up here. We'll deal with this guy later where we'll cut it back and overlap him. We're gonna to have to cut some excess out of here. We just try and establish a datum. Sit that in there and work out here. So get an idea, we're gonna to have to put a cut around this area. Well, I just want to be conscious that I don't cut too much off. So that's probably a hard point around here that we need to cut. I'll fold him back. What I'm going to do is just cut straight down into there for now. That'll relieve this that we can fold it down, work out how we're going to cut up there. So, so just make sure this hasn't slid as high up as we can get up there. I'm just using my knee to datum this. Let's see how that sits. So this guy probably wants to be, needs a bit of relief down in here. So what I'm doing here is just feeling around to get the material to flow and choose a point which sort of makes a dart. Now I know there's a hard point there. So if we're just gonna put a cut straight down there, that'll end up overlapping something like that. We've got this guy here which we need to cut clearance around anyway. So if I choose a point down here, now we'll just cut this smaller than what it needs to be. Now, if you've got a sharp knife, you could probably even put this on a bench and cut it out with a steel rule if you wanted. Keep working this piece here. All right, so you can see we've been wrestling this bit for a little bit. I'm gonna relieve a bit more out of that, but if you slowly keep working it and just work on your pattern, just cut less than what you need. That way you're not gonna end up with big gaps everywhere. So we've slowly been relieving this out, relieving this out. Um, I'll probably take a little bit more out of this area here to get that to sit nice. Open this guy up a little bit more. But you can see even in this area, we've been able to get it to relieve itself and sit down. now. I've got a bit of a challenge here. We're gonna work out what we're gonna do. I might cut this guy off for now to take some weight out. And then we'll figure, maybe we need a relief cut down here to get this guy to sit across, but we'll slowly keep working it. So we're gonna sort out down here in this footwell where the transmission tunnel hits the firewall. Now you can see, oh, I've got a little bit of excess up here. I'll get our chalk and we'll just mark 
we'll take this guy. He's got to fit under that bracket, so we'll go over there, kick that back up. Quickly just snip this bit off. So he'll fit under there. So what we've got, we can either try and cut this back flush and tape them together. You could glue them together, but that sits over that quite nice. So what I'm gonna do is, even the step on that's pretty good, is just leave it there. I might cut an excess bit off here, just so that's neat. Let him sit down there. This guy works over, so he sort of holds that guy up, clamps it in position. Probably just neaten that guy off. Sit that there, that's actually pretty good. What we'll do, I'll show you down here now, a different strategy, where we've got these two, we've got too much material here. So what I'm thinking I'll do is, cut the excess foam off and stick that down over the top of itself. So I've just drawn a line there where it looks like the foam's in the way. And then we can get a, a sharp blade and simply, we're gonna take the foam off that back face. So I'm gonna go from that point up to there, it looks like. And now this is glued on here, so I can peel that foam away, leave that glue on so we're going to use that to tack the face of this back down. Peel this guy away. So you can see there we've cut away the foam. That's going to allow that just to overlap down. And it's lightly tacked. Look, it's, it's only just tacked. But we could put a bit of tape over that when we're ready to finally put it in just to hold it down. The step's minimal, so our carpet will sit over that. We can do a similar thing up here. So I've cut a little bit away from that. If we get that sitting there, overlap that on itself. Look, you could glue it. Um, the challenge you got with glue is nothing's really gonna wanna stick to this. Even your vinyl cement's gonna struggle to stick to it. So if you wanna make this that's removable, you could use a gaffer tape. This is one we've just got from the local hardware store. Uh, it's typical race tape. So you could just get that. Where we've got this overlap. And just tape that joint together. Rub it down and that'll stick that, that it's fairly robust. So we can do the same treatment up here. So that's stuck that down and you can see, we could do the same down here where we've got that other cut. But as you can see, it's conformed pretty well. I've got a joint up here, which is an interesting one, where I've come up short. But if you grab uh, some of your excess material here, what I'm gonna do is do a patch piece and just cut it up neatly and butt it together. So we can put that guy in there. All right, so I've cut that neat. Now I'm just gonna draw it. A line down here, a line down there. Now rather than just butt it in, what I might do is cut these guys 10 mil longer, and then we're gonna strip 10 mil of foam out of each side and just drop it in as a cap. So, so we're just gonna try and cut through the foam on this side. I'm being careful here not to cut all the way through the vinyl. Now what we wanna do is peel off, you'll see on the bottom side of this, the glue has a paper layer. We wanna lift that with the foam. So we wanna take that glue layer off with this. What that's gonna leave is a bit of adhesive on here, which is gonna allow this to stick down. Peel that off. Now this guy should just overlap these two. So if we butt him into one side, and he'll sit flush so we can tape that joint down with our gaffer tape again we can neaten this cut up as well before our carpet goes in but in theory what we've done is we've covered this 100% I mean within reason it is a bit impractical in this truck to get in and try and cover all around this stuff look if we had the car and it was totally stripped before we had put the the dash in 
you'd look to cover all of that, then put all this stuff in on top to create a total sealed sound barrier, but we're doing the best we can with what we've got. So now that's the front pretty much done. We've got enough clearance here. I'll neaten up a line here and cut a bit of excess off down here so we know that our um, C-section plastic cover is going to clip back in. We'll just do that quickly. Now you might find some clearance issues when you go to put your trim and stuff back in, but we can just keep trimming this down or take the foam out the back so we have got enough clearance. At the moment we're better off leaving it oversized. So we'll go on and we'll do this back section of the floor here because that's going to neaten up a line across here too where we want to overlap it. So now we've got the rear half of the floor that we're going to cover. So we've got a full sheet here. It's going to go left to right. Now we're, we want to just overlap what we've created in the front. Now our challenge here is to work out where all our seatbelt seat belt mounts are, seat bolt mounting points, console clearance. So I've got a plan here. We pulled this off the, which is the underlay off the old floor. Now, we can use this as a template because it's going to set us up for the clearance that we need around our seat bolts. Our seat belt mounts are here, so we're going to want to cut this out. Um, we're probably going to cover this as much as we can. Our console mounted to these points here and screwed down here. So we're better off trying to seal as much of this out with our sand blanket because you've got your, trans your transmissions here and then our tail shafts all happening. Uh, so I'm going to use this as a template. Obviously, we're going to come up short to here. So what I did was mark on here a point where that is. So I've got that as a reference. And then we'll take that and that'll date them up to here. It'll set all these up that they're square and set them off a center line. Then we should just have excess on the left and right to cut. So we'll go cut that guy. Here's one that we prepared earlier, which has got all our seat bolt mounts cut out. There's a bit of wiring we've got to work around here, which we can either go over or under. Each car will be different on what you've got clearance wise, but you can see we've got the overlap it's still a little bit long down here, needs to be cut out, but we've got an overlap here. So if we choose where we're going to datum this, which is around here, we might do our trick where we'll draw the line on here, relieve our foam out of the back, and then just overlap that so it's got a small overlap and tape it down. So that's our plan for the front. Now with the back, it's a bit of a trick. I'll come around this side and show you what we've created. So we've worked out that our mat needs to roll up here. Now, down this side, we've got an issue where the material wants to dart. So we've chosen a point, cut a line through. So this area was a little bit more complex with getting the material to flow around. So what happened was we've cut a relief down here and then this material was still to get him to lay down, we cut a dart down here to let it fall flat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to infill a piece. So easiest way to do it, just got some clear tape here so we can see what's happening. We'll tape this guy down where we want him to sit, down there. So he can sit there, but we need to cut this triangle. So I'm just going to use the tape to make a template. So if we just place this on. Now I'm just going to draw the shape that we want here. We'll go stick this over another piece of vinyl, cut it out. Now I'm going to allow just a little bit of clearance around this guy, a couple of mil, because this is hollow, it's going to want to shrink or be smaller than what we're actually trying to achieve. So we'll go lay this over a piece of offcut. And he fits in perfect. So there's a couple of ways you could have done this. You could have actually cut it 10 mil oversize and then checked the back of the foam out, glued it or taped it in. We've gone flush with it and we're simply going to use our gaffer tape again and then just tape it into position. So you can see down here it's allowed us to curve right around that edge. Now this doesn't need to be solid that you can pull it out and throw it around. You're going to put it in once and then you're going to put your carpet over the top. So the tape's going to sit there and be clamped down by the weight of the carpet. You're not going to have an issue with it in the long term. 
The advantage in not gluing down the mass noise liner is that it is removable still. So even if this is a truck that goes out, gets wet, uh, you can lift out the carpet, you can lift this straight up, pull it out, wipe out, inspect, whatever you need to do, put this back down. We've also got another short piece that we need to run here to get us back up to the rear wall. So we've got our mass noise liner light installed and you can see as a lint material, it's flowed out pretty well. We showed you some techniques how to overlap it, check the foam out of the back or butt it up and then just use your gaffer tape to tape up any joints. So the good thing with this product is we can lift this out, which is favored in the four wheel drive community. Um, our goal with this was to try and create a sealed blanket. There's some areas that you can see where we've had to leave cutouts or was impractical to get around areas like the transmission tunnel, but we've covered as much as we can. We've left clearance down the side there where the loom runs because the factory carpet had a C-section plastic staple to it. So our next move after we've done this rear firewall is to put the carpet in and I'm expecting to be some sort of clearance issues here. Uh, the one is the footrest on these trucks particular that's a little bit teething. Make sure you leave enough room around it, but we'll work through those as we get it back in. For now, we're going to hit this rear firewall and we're going to put our acoustic liner on it. So easiest way to do that product comes in a sheet. We'll measure up simply the height that we need. So this is around 390 mil and this is... Uh, we'll cut that one at 110. I'm going to leave this exposed here, which is, gives us the ability to mount things uh, later to it. So we're going to put an infill piece around here and straight across there. So I'll go cut them. We'll bring them back. So we've cut out our foam for the rear wall. We've made a cut out here because there's a wiring grommet there that uh, want to be someone will want to go through at some stage. So we've cut this to size. We'll butt another piece up there. And then we've cut some strips for the top as infills here which we'll need to cut around here. We'll get this guy stuck on. So it's peel and stick back. So you just gotta make sure you get your nail under the glue, not to peel the glue off. And then that'll relieve the backing. So we'll peel half the back off. That way we're not gonna have to wrestle this. We'll get this guy datumed in the corner. Even if you do stick it down, you initially can, before you rub it, pull the back off. So we want to make sure we're in the right spot with this grommet here, which is about there. Once you push it down, you're committed. So that's got our rear wall lined. So you can see we've left this exposed. We've left this exposed. If you want to go to the next level with this, you could get a stretch carpet, which was also got spray contact adhesive on both surfaces, stick it over and upholster the whole thing. We're going to put a B pillar back on, which will come down to about here. Um, this is still exposed in the truck. So if you did want to take it to the next level and, and take the truck to a more passenger friendly with trim everywhere, you'd just upholster glue right down on that rear firewall. So we're gonna deaden the door now. I'll show you how to remove this door trim. Visual screw here, Phillips head. That'll slide forward and then pull it towards you. And you if you pull on this handle here, that'll take the strain off it flick this little tag and then lift up so you can see he was clipped over 
clip him out, lift him up. So two screws under here, you can see they've left a mark for you. So get a, a wide screwdriver that fits in there. If you use a small one, you're at risk of marking it. Lever that out. One. Two Phillips heads in there. Now the rest are plastic style clips which you can see witnesses in this door trim around. So we'll start under here just with this lever. I can feel one here. You can see it there. We just try and pop him. That's one. Next one's there. You're better off giving these a sharp snap rather than a slow. Just lever up between there. Loom for the electric windows, press that guy in. And pull. Then you can feed him back out. There's your studs. Now we want to get inside this door and it looks like the biggest opening we've got is down here. So we want to try and keep this plastic waterproof membrane in good condition. This is just an extra bit of tape that they've used as a seal here where the loom goes through. So let's take him off, we can leave him there. So my plan is just to peel this off and tape it back over here. Now this glue, it's not a glue as such, it's similar material to our dampening tape. You can see it's very gummy. If you give it a quick pull, you'll find that it'll come with the plastic membrane. So you just gotta be careful it doesn't stick onto itself. Now make sure this guy goes back on because that's gonna stop that rattling. So, you can see we haven't got the glass up. We'll just run the glass up on this window. You can see where it's a bit dirty inside here. So we'll get in here with our prep wash, wax and grease remover. And we'll clean all this surface off so we know our dampening sheets are gonna stick. So another way for you to work out where you're going to put these sheets if you come around here what I'm going to do to feed them in the door I'm going to cut this one down I'm going to make the first one stick in here cut him across here stick another one through here and then I'll cut some smaller pieces through this lower section and then we'll cut some strips to go up through here and in these areas so use that as a quick size go about there so we used about two and a half sheets inside this door skin and we've reached in and we've got right up where we can get to. We've then got in with our application roller, rolled it on so we've got enough pressure that it's actually stuck down. So now we can put this membrane back in position. So we weren't actually able to do a road test with this truck before and after. The truck isn't registered, rear wheels aren't covered, we've got tyre rubbing issues here. So what you can notice though on it is how solid it is. 
when you tap all these panels, particularly the roof. When we first did the roof, well, the tap test on it, this was like a, a drum skin. Now, it's super solid. So you'll really notice this when you take this out on the dirt corrugated roads and all those panels, they've no longer got that ability to resonate. So this is our dual cab full drive pack, which gives you four boxes of the stage one sound deadener, giving you 7.2 square meters, which in the truck you saw we covered the floor, the rear wall, the roof, and the door skins. We've also got the two sheets of the insulator, which allowed us to skin the roof skin, the acoustic liner, which we covered the rear firewall with, and then we've got our mass noise liner light over there, which is the carpet underlay or the sound blanket that runs through, and also the install kit. Now I'll take you around, we'll have a look at the packaging. Question we always get asked is, will it fit underneath the carpet? Dimensionally, including the sound deadener and the mass noise liner light, we've added 10 mil. So we found that that factory cotton jute was up to 20 mil in areas. The carpet's fitted in beautifully in this thing. Let's go have a look. The carpet, there's still that factory c-section plastic there and we've got no fat underneath it carpets aren't great in these things um, and there is plenty of float on them but we haven't added any thickness any thickness that has stopped us from putting it back in so you can see under there there's our there's a bit of padding you can see that toyota's put on this we've left that in there he's not doing anything but you can see our liner there and if we flip our rear seat forward you can see the acoustic liner on the rear wall so, as I said before, if you wanted to take that to the next level, a stretch carpet, you'd just spray contact adhesive and a pulser over the top of it.